hi guys today we are going to introduce about uh, the below topics and these are the categories of mobile applications and uh, latest tools the development tools ios architecture and what are the frameworks we have and what contents we are going to introduce um, the simple iphone application and how we are different from the others and what about after the training okay what we can do okay so let's see the categories of mobile applications we basically have three categories one is native apps another one is hybrid apps another one is mobile application mob web applications so native applications are nothing but either it could be either native ios or android or blackberry or windows so native apps basically runs on its own operating system that is its own platform so if we create one ios project it will be running on only uh, apple products it won't be running on any other devices the main advantage of native apps are the performance because it runs on one platform so which gives you the good performance and accuracy and what are the latest features are available so all the features we can implement in the native apps if today apple releases a new feature in ios 10 and we can easily implement all the features related to ios 10 also why means we don't have any dependency on other frameworks or libraries so it's a one platform so that's why we can use all the frameworks and libraries available as per the current operating system so whereas in hybrid apps so hybrid apps are nothing but basically it runs on a web view so each platform will be having the web view on that so we are going to load the scripting language content basically for example so the phone gap it's a library okay so this framework basically provides okay this framework basically provides all the available uh, libraries or the classes by using that we can access the uh, native application features so hybrid apps uses scripting languages basically how like websites loads the html content the same way we use a scripting language and we can use the common scripting language for all the platforms like ios or android or blackberry but in hybrid apps we cannot give the native look as well as we cannot give the performance as like native apps and also we won't be seeing the app navigation flow similar to native apps so why means so the hybrid apps uses the scripting language where this navigation flow is completely different from the native apps okay, everywhere we have to customize and also if you try to access the native features like camera and the location services as well as some address book like that so we need to depend on the phone gap libraries so if the apple does not provide the permission to the phone gap developers then automatically so uh, this native features won't be get access in the hybrid apps and here each time your scripting language will convert into your uh, your native and to access the native features which takes a little fraction of seconds uh, which basically give you less performance so that's why in hybrid apps we'll see less performance than your actual native apps and we cannot give assurance that it compatible for future versions so that's why there won't, will be many limitations for I hybrid apps only the main advantage of hybrid apps is the time taken to develop the applications okay we can take little less time than the native apps okay in order to develop the hybrid apps so that's the main advantage and we can use the hybrid apps for small enterprise applications and small complex applications for larger data apps as well as complex applications better we can go for hybrid apps okay so next mobile web applications so mobile web applications are these are websites basically it's really websites but it looks like native apps so that means when we try to access any website through mobile app on browser basically these web apps will be accessing on browser okay basically these are not a mobile applications so when we try to access on a particular device the content will fit to screen width so it looks like native okay it looks like native or mobile application but really these are websites so the uh, web development team write a compatible code okay where uh, 
responsive design code they will be writing in the back end and based on that so the content will fit into your iphone screen or ipad screen or desktop screen so like that it fits okay so this is about the categories of mobile application so next let's see some statistics of the mobile uses why the mobile applications are popular so as we discussed in the session one so we can see some statistics so because if you observe 80 to 85 85 percent of the users are using the mobile applications daily so rather than using the desktop apps so either it could be the games or the social media or maybe any other utility apps or product twitter enterprise applications so among this okay throughout the world if you compare so the ios resource is too high because of number of users are there for ios platform that is for apple users so why apple users are more because of the apple user apple devices satisfy the end user requirement so basically so what a user requires for small business or whatever it may be for different pharmacy industry or to track few things so the apple satisfy the end user requirement so that's why so there is a huge resource for apple products because of the it will give the good look as well as the performance and it feature update updates as well as the os upgrades and compatibility and lot more features so due to this so there is big resource for apple products okay so let's see uh, what are the latest tools we have and the latest operating system the latest development tool is xcode 8 Xcode 8 internally supports the iOS 10. So when we install the Xcode 8, the iOS SDK 10 will be get installed automatically, and uh, we will be getting all the simulators which can run on iOS 10. And also we can debug the applications uh, on iPhone devices which are having iOS 10 versions. That means when we use Xcode 8, that means these applications are compatible for iOS 10 okay so this is all about tools and uh, the latest operating system let's see the ios architecture so architecture means basically it is integration of hardware and software so every embedded system okay which uh, commonly includes the hardware and software initially uh, iphone hardware will be manufactured on that the iphone operating system will be installed on that we install the apps so by default we will be getting the uh, default native apps as well as we can also download the so external apps from the app store and we can install that means your apps are running on operating system that is iphone operating system the entire iphone operating system it is, is categorized into four major layers four layers and these are uh, coca touch and media services and core services and core voice from the mac development and the mobile application development only the first layer is different the rest of all layers are remain same so in mac app development so we'll have only coca but here we'll have coca touch why means in the mobile devices we'll have the touch events so that's the only change the same architecture also be there for mac apps development okay and also the ios is derived from mac operating system Instantly, the Mac OS is there, so that's a desktop operating system. From that, the iOS has been derived. Let's see what are the uh, models we have in each and every layer. Basically, what is a layer? Layer basically contains a set of predefined libraries or frameworks. What is a framework? It contains a set of predefined classes. By using these classes, we are going to create the design or we'll implement a particular features. So let's see what frameworks we'll have within the Coco Touch. One is UI Kit and Message UI and Event Kit, and lot more. So we have a lot of frameworks where we are going to introduce when we start develop the applications. So what's the use of UI Kit? So UI means User Interface Kit. So so whatever we see on the mobile screen, everything should be created by UI Kit classes. In UI Kit, each and every class will start with UI. So that is User Interface. For example, when we see a login page, so we see the text box and buttons. When user tap on the text box, then only keypad comes. That means user must interact with the elements, UI controls. So without user interaction, okay, we cannot get some events on the screens. So that's the name itself put as UI kit. User interface, that means whatever it is visible to the users, 
everything comes under ui kit classes either it is text or labels or buttons or text fields or the camera controls or whatever it may be so that means without ui kit there won't be any app why means initially if you want to create the app window we must need ui kit basically the app window will be created by ui window and in order to create empty screens or to create the launch screen or home screen whatever it may be we must need ui kit so that's why the ui kit is mandatory for each and every application and message ui basically provides the message composers as well as the mail composers and event kit provides event generating elements and which basically provides events and we have lot more frameworks and in the cocotas which basically used to create the lot of ui controls auto layouts that is basically adaptive interface so how do we need to create the design for all the apple products so we can create a universal project okay where it provides the design for all those devices it compatible for all the apple products that is mobile products either iphone or ipad and in iphone also we have lot of models from iphone 5 to iphone 7 so how do we need to make compatible design so we have another important concept called uh, auto layouts so by using this we can create the adaptive design so how do we need to create adaptive design so based on the auto layouts auto layouts what does it provides it basically uses some constraints so we basically design on constraint based so constraint basically a place a particular element at a particular place so that means the constraints are basically uses like uh, alignment constraints or it could be uh, width constraints or height constraints as well as the size constraints so basically these constraints will tell okay where do the element has to be placed either it is left constraint or right constraint or maybe top constraint as well as bottom and on the view if you place another view then on that also we need to maintain again left right top and bottom and what is the size width and height so based on this it works in all the devices and it displays as per the constraints we apply so basically these constraints uses either alignment based or size based so space add space okay something like the spaces okay so based on the spaces we added okay the elements will be placed in at a particular place and it works for every screen so even if you run on any device like iphone 5 or 6 or 7 so it works in all the devices if you want to place one ui control element in the center so yes we can make it center by just putting in left and right constraint or else we can give the fixed width and we can place within the center of the screen auto layouts are very very important so in recent days because after introducing the iphone 6 and 6 plus devices so because we have to make it compatible design for all the screens so that's why so we introduced the auto layouts and with real time screens how do we need to use and how to make it compatible design for all the mobile products okay so that's it so next so let's see if you ui controls because we have a lot of ui controls within the ui kit like text field sliders switches and segment controller and button labels and web view activity indicator and date pickers and table use and collection use and camera controls we have a lot more controls okay where we are going to introduce in the app development okay so let's see what exactly media services contains media services basically provides all the media related frameworks so the one is av foundation kit which basically provides uh, audio video related classes so if you want to play the sound files or if you want to play the any music so we have to use this uh, av foundation kit classes so av means audio video so based on this uh, we can play the audio and video but it basically provides only sound it does not display the videos that means here it provide it just plays sound it won't display the video so in order to display the video so either we have to go for av player v controllers or the media kit so media kit provides some media related classes which can play the audio and also it displays the video and similar to this av kit provides some uh, audio classes which are just like works as mp3 players okay, it is just to play the sound files and where this sound file we can assign to any video player also and also it provides av recorder classes and all the things by using that 
we can record the videos and audio so how do we need to play the sound files how to um, pause it play stop and all these kind of actions we are going to introduce and also we will display the duration so what is the duration of the uh, play time and what is the current duration what is the remaining duration like that and once one song is finished how do we need to start play the next song so how do we need to uh, continuously play the multiple uh, media files and also so how do we need to uh, run the application in the background mode for long time because when we use music apps it must be running in the background for a long time so running in the background means okay because many mobile applications will get suspend after 10 minutes but how do we need to uh, run more than 10 minutes that is for a long time for because for the all music apps it must be running more than 10 minutes and until user, user is going to stop yes we have to run it and also this media services provide quad core and assist library quad core framework basically provides okay to set the layers and borders and all those things and basically shadows and all those things we can create using the quad core framework and the assets library basically provides uh, assets library uh, folder which maintains the all the assets of your application okay so this is about a uh, media services okay so let's see another important service called core services the core services provide a core foundation kit basically it contains all the core foundation kit classes which we use for data types so in this we have foundation kit which provides the classes like ns classes so the ns basically uh, tells next step okay so ns what is ns next step and all the ns classes are nothing but language classes what are the language classes we use everything comes under foundation kit and also the foundation kit provides some other classes like file manager classes in order to create the files and directories and the core foundation kit classes we call data types so if you want to hold the data so we need to use the data types so using the data types okay so we can hold and we can transfer the data from one screen to another screen like this and it provides databases like plist or core data and sqlite so data types means basically these are just uh, to hold the data temporarily while run the application only the data types hold the data so when we quit the app the data won't be there in order to store the data permanently so we have to use some databases so which stores the data within your app within your device and some of the application will uh, compatible for offline access so if you want to support for offline access we must use the local databases which maintains the data within your device for that we have databases and how like your contacts app okay, when we create the contacts it saves in your device and that data cannot be used or access in other device so like that and now see and uh, the core services also provides the map kit and core location services it is also important because when you want to display the location and if you want to get the current user location services we must need it so how to display a particular location and how to display some annotation indicators and how to get current user address information and latitude and longitudes so based on this okay we can easily track a uh, user locations so this is how does the cab system basically works so when a uh, user is at your location we can easily get the current location and we can also get the address information okay so next the core services also provides the web services basically so we introduce the restful and restless and this web services so web services provides basically to interact with the server database if you want to download the data or if you want to upload the data from server so we have to use the web services so in this we basically send request and we'll get it download and we'll parse so we are going to use this some parsing technique called either xml or json this is basically to convert the download data into your actual either objects or shift dictionary or array formats so when we have the so our native data so we can easily load and how we are going to load on the screen wise yes we can load so that's the use of the parsing techniques to convert the download data into array or dictionary we use parsers okay that's it next we'll see the core os 
the core OS basically provides uh, frameworks like a security framework and core Bluetooth and external accessory and accelerate framework. Security framework just to maintain the security for the uh, device features and the core Bluetooth if you want to implement the Bluetooth feature from your application, yes we can. External accessory basically provides some classes in order to identify any external device whether it is connected or not like the headset or any card readers or any pharmacy equipments. Accelerate basically provides to support for the uh, the orientations of the device like the tilt and all the geolocations and uh, GPS related. Okay, so basically it it just provides some classes in order to get the uh, device features. And now, so let's see a sample Xcode project. So we are going to create a sample Xcode project using Xcode. Go to Xcode. And create a new project, select single view based template and give the app name as demo app. Click on next and create into your desktop. So when we create the single view project, we will be getting by default two classes with one design storyboard file. On this design storyboard file, we can create the design just by drag drop. So we can also change the design control to a particular specific device either it is iPhone 5 or iPhone 6 or 7. So initially in order to start design so we have to consider at least a particular device resolution or device size either it could be either iPhone 5 that is iPhone 4 inch device or 4.7 or 5.5 inch device. So let us say for iPhone 6 or iPhone 5s ok. So let us select the iPhone says 4.7 inch yes so this is the iPhone 4.7 that is iPhone 6 resolution. On this, so whatever we want to create, yes, we can drag drop. So, this is the one view controller view. This is the empty view controller which displays one empty view by default. And on this, if you want to select the back, change the background color, yes, we can change the background color, yes. And if you want to create any controls, yes. So, in this, we are going to introduce few UI controls like some switch, slider, as well as some loading indicator. And let us see just drag the switch component and simulate the just drag on loading indicator and another one is the segmented control. Segmented control basically provides horizontally number of segments it's like this and another one is slider. Slider basically provides a variable value and its value we are going to display on one label, label basically displays the text. Okay. In this, we are introducing few components, the UI controls. So, how do we need to create and how do we need to get the events and actions? Okay, that is what we are going to see. So, this is switch, and we can also change the switch properties by default if you want to set as off. Yes, we can set the off state. So, and also we can change the tint color for this switch. Yes, we can change the tint color. So, when it is on state, yes, this tint color will be displayed. And for activity indicator, so we basically have three styles that is larger white, white and gray style. If you select larger white, we will be getting the larger style and we can also apply the tint color just like this. And let us go to this uh, slider properties and select this slider and what are the uh, properties we have in the slider if you want to see, go to attribute inspector here we can see. For slider, we can set min and max value here. So, you can set min and max like this. And what is the current value? Initially, if you want to set a current value like 100, yes, we can set. Or if you want to set 50, yes, we can set. And if you want to set it initial position 0, yes, we can set like this. And label, so by default, label text is label. And if you want to set font, alignment, text color, background color, and all the things we can set in the attribute inspector. Now, so let us see this segmented controller properties. And here, the number of segments are 2. If you want to give more than Yes, we can agree. Let us change this number of segment to 3 and we can also change the titles of each and every segment. Let us select this and give the segment control title as the first segment and its title is uh, something like some red. So, we are just giving some color names or else we can give some ranking names or whatever it may be, some categories. 
So this is the way how do we need to increase the number of segments. Basically segment controller contains number of segment buttons. So when you user tap on each and every button it basically provides event. Now we have created the design. So how do we need to access these design elements and how to receive events from this UI controls. In order to access these elements and if want to receive the events we basically need to provide IB actions and IB outlets. So it's simple. So go to assistance editor where we see two windows within one single editor. It's simple. So this is a class file. So we have to drag the connections from design file to class. For switch it will be having events because user will interact with it just by setting on and off. Select action, give the action name. It's basically user defined name. So we can give any name like switch action. And it's parameter type class switch because when we tap on the switch we will get the switch object. And similar this for activity indicator. So the loading indicator basically rotates the it start animate but we no need to create the events for this. So anyway if you try to provide the actions it won't display. I means it just rotates. So user won't interact with it. Activity. Just we have to create the outlets. Outlet basically just to access from design file to class. From here to here we can access. So by using this variable we can access this loading indicator. So when user tap on either switch on and off this action will get called. Now for the same way so we can create for slider just provide the action because user will interact with it. So we can give the slider action and select the any type the object parameter type is UI slider because while interacting with the UI controls we have to receive the object. Next similar to this for label just create one outlet just label anyway for label we cannot create the actions. So label uses just to display the string text. Okay, it, it is used to display the text and similar to this create the action for the segment controller select action and give the action name as segment action and its parameter type class must be of the same class anyway we will see the same class type in the parameter list okay so now see so we have created some ib actions and ib outlets actions to receive the events outlets to just to access from design file to class okay, that's it now let's see how do we need to implement so the implementation is nothing but when user tap on the switch what we are going to do so in this we basically want to identify whether the switch is on or off how to identify it's simple so we have this uh, switch object so the switch object dot on basically on is your uh, boolean value so which basically provides either true or false if it is on yes it is true and if it is off it will go to the else condition we are just checking by using if condition either it is on or off if it is on do something if it is off do something so we have to write the code here so in this when the switch is on we are going to rotate the activity indicator that is your activity dot activity dot so your activity indicator so your activity object what's your object name so here we have activity indicator so this is the activity indicator the object dot it's having predefined method and start animating so when user tap on the when user tap on uh, switch and if switch is on so we are starting the activity indicator start animation so that means the loading indicator will start spin okay so the loading indicator will start rotate so when user switch off just we are stopping so this is just to make how do we need to start and stop the indicators so that's what we are learning here and now the same way for the slider when you vary the slider we will be getting the slider value so if you want to print yes we can print the slider value in the debug area slider dot value and if you want to display label dot text label always requires string text basically slider dot value the uh, slider value is float value so we cannot assign float value to the label in order to assign we need to make it string format this is string format and within the string if you want to place any variable value in shift so it must be followed by backward slash and within parentheses we need to place the variable value so that's it so this is the way how do we need to place any strings or any integer or float values values in the middle of strings 
So, string format means basically to create a string in a particular format. So, however we want. So, label dot text equal to string means just placing one integer value or float value in the middle of string. Then we must put within parentheses and followed by backward slash. That is it. So, this is the way how do we need to get the slider value and we are displaying on the label. And segment action. So, when we tap on each segment. So, when we tap on each and every segment button. Okay, when we tap on each segment button we will get the segment action. Within the segment action what we are going to do is you just want to identify on which button he tap. Even if we click on any segment we will be getting calling the same action, but we have to identify. So, whether it is first segment or second button. So, simple. So, how do we need to identify? So, we have to check we are getting the segment control object. If segment control object dot selected segment index is equal to 0. 0 means it is the first segment else we have to check for other index else if segment controller dot selected segment index is equal to 1 else it could be last index we know need to check because if it is not 0 and 1 definitely it could be the 2 that is why. So, in this we, we want to just change the background color self dot view dot background color how to change current view self dot view and it is view and its background color if you want to change just call background color equal to we have a predefined class called ui color dot just we have to apply the colors ok either red or whatever it may be ok. So, just instead of this red just we are giving some yellow color and the same way when user tap on the third button we just want to change its background color to something like some green and when user tap on last index last button then in the last index we are just changing the color to some blue that is cn light blue color ok. See the segment action is same, but how do we identify on which button user tap ok. So, in order to identify so we have to check the selected segment index. So, when we have three buttons the indexes are three that start from 0 to count minus 1 0 and 1 and 2. 0 means first button, 1 means second button and 2 means the third button that is it. Now, let us see. So, how to put a debugger? What is meant by debugging? Debugging is nothing but putting a breakpoint and pausing the compiler at a particular place. For example, when user tap on the switch, if user tap on the switch, how do we need to get the switch action? How to get the switch action? So, whether this is getting calling or not, how to identify? Put a breakpoint so that we will identify easily whether the compiler is coming to this area or not. So, we designed for iPhone 6 let us select the iPhone 6 simulator and run the application. So, when you run automatically simulator will get launched and whatever we design the same screen will appear as it is on the simulator. So, this is the simulator. So, when we install the Xcode automatically Xcode install simulator when we run the project the simulator will get launched whatever we did the design the same design will appear. Initially it is uh, on state and we can also set the default state as off. Initially we can set off state. Now, run again yes the switch would be in off state default. Now, when we try to on go to the V controller file. So, we put a debugger breakpoint. So, why do we need to put means in order to pass the compiler and execute one by one by line of code. Let us make it on. Now, you can easily understand whether it is get call or not. It is paused. Now, it is on or off. Yes, it is on. Now, when the switch is on we are just rotating the indicator that is it. Now, see the indicator will start rotate. When you switch off it comes to else condition we are just stop rotating. So, that means when you click on any download we can call this method start animation. When downloads are finished you can stop animation. So, in that case we can use these two methods to rotate the loading indicator either it is stop or stop. So, simple. So, we have predefined methods ok in order to start rotate and stop the animation ok that is it. So, this is how do we need to get the switch on and off actions as well as how to start rotate. So, when we switch on if want to make some settings on yes we can do ok. In this case ok we are just rotating the indicator and similar to this when you vary the slider yes we are getting the variable value by using this we can adjust the volume as well as we can also adjust the background color. So, how to adjust the background color and also we are printing the uh, result of the slider value 
okay the slider value we are printing it is also printing in the debug area so print statement basically print the output in the debug area and also we are illustrate on the screen okay so what's the max value 250 because we already set the max value for this slider as 250 now so let's see so the segment controller by default first segment is highlighted because it is already selected even if you provide nothing is happening when you click on green yes it is changing green color blue like this yellow so when you use the tap on each segment okay different background color we are changing so instead of this we can also move from one screen to another screen and if you want to change some settings yes we can change so this is the way how do we need to get events from this segment control slider we can vary as well as the switch we can get on and off actions so this is the way how do we need to create any ui controls and get actions and we can also move from one screen to another screen so by using navigation controls okay so that you also will see the navigation how do we need to move from one screen to another screen and how to create number of screens and all the things okay we'll see okay in the next session okay that's it thank you